How would you explain your response to Hume's exclusion of miracles to someone in high school or someone who doesn't follow probability calculus too well? Well, I had to smile when uh, I saw this question because in the class lectures, I go into Bayes' theorem and try to explain this in some detail um, because uh, people like Bart Ehrman, for example, completely misunderstand the probabilities involved. How would you explain this to a high school kid? Well, here's my best shot. Tell him it's like a law court where someone is accused of a crime. Now, what is the probability, say, that the husband is the murderer of his wife? Well, if you don't look at any evidence, suppose you just ask that question prior to the prosecution presenting its evidence, what's the probability of that? Well, it might not be very high. But then you recalculate the probability of the evidence uh, based upon the DNA, the fingerprint evidence, the motive, the lack of an alibi, the eyewitness testimony of someone who saw the husband going into the house just at the time the murder occurred. And then you can say, based upon uh, all of this evidence, the hypothesis that the um, husband is the murderer makes much better sense of the evidence than the hypothesis that he is innocent. And in that case, that can outbalance any intrinsic improbability in his being the murderer that you um, estimated apart from the evidence. So one of these is the prior probability without any evidence, what's the probability he's guilty? The other then, you figure, um, what is the probability of the evidence given that he's guilty uh, versus that he's not guilty? And, and when you put these together, that will give you the total probability. Um, what is the probability that he's guilty given the general information we have plus the evidence? And then it may turn out that indeed it's highly probable that he's guilty. So how does this relate to, to David Hume's argument? Oh, the way it relates to David Hume's argument is that Hume only considers the prior probability. He only considers the probability of someone raising from the dead relative to the background information alone, which he takes to be the laws of nature. And he says, relative to the laws of nature, the probability of someone rising from the dead is terribly, terribly low. Um, but he never considers that other probability that I mentioned, namely, which makes the evidence more probable, the resurrection hypothesis or the denial of the resurrection hypothesis. And so Hume's argument is mathematically, demonstrably fallacious because he only considers the prior probability of the resurrection hypothesis and not the probability of the evidence given the resurrection hypothesis versus um, its alternative. But now you see you've already gotten beyond the high school student and made it <laughs> too complicated. Uh, if you want to explain to the high school student, I think the law court analogy ought to make it clear. What's the probability of the resurrection without any evidence? Now, what's the probability of the resurrection once you bring in the evidence?